This is the R4DS online learning community, um, Mastering Shiny Book Club, Cohort 4. And today we'll be going over Chapter 7, Graphics. So some of the learning objectives we set out um, were to use render plot to display reactive plots, um, create interactive plots, and display images with render image. Um, so the basics, interactivity, the basics, um, the syntax for displaying a plot in the sh Shiny app is in the UI, the plot output function releases an output that can be used as an input. And in the server, the render plot function releases the plot. And some of the interactive actions we're gonna be looking at today are clicking. Um, and these are mouse interactions that you can do within the Shiny, of the Shiny app. So these will be clicking, um, double clicking, hovering, which is when you use the when the mouse stays in the same place for a little while, and brushing, which is a rectangular selection tool. Okay, so I'm gonna use the book a bit more for the rest of this. Um, so yeah, again, this is chapter seven graphics of Mastering Shiny. Um, so yeah, and actually, I've been playing around trying to figure out how best to um, show everything. I'm new to kind of using Shiny, so bear with me. <laughs> I realized when I was like rendering the book and also trying to run a Shiny app, it didn't go too well. Uh, let me see. Oh, this is the wrong one I wanted. Oh, I guess I could have just opened the... It didn't it work because the terminal got like stuck rendering the, the book. So you couldn't use it anymore for R? Um, so I realized when I was, um, basically when I was trying to, um, when I rendered the book and also trying to run the Shiny app, it didn't work. So basically I can only have one or the other open is what I found. But yeah, so this should work. I've been testing it <laughs> for a couple of moments. So basically, um, one of the things we're gonna be looking at um, today, like based on chapter seven, again, it's gonna be looking at interactivity of the graphics within, um, within, um, within Shiny apps. So we're gonna be looking at the um, empty cars data set for the most part, um, which is data extracted from the 1974 Motor Trend US Magazine. And it comprises of field conception and 10 aspects of automobile design and performance for 32 automobiles. And some of the variables are MPG, which are miles per gallon, um, um, the number of cylinders, displacement, gross horsepower, rear axle ratio, weight. Um, I don't understand case that what that is. Uh, but yeah, these are um, down here in the help you can see the variables. So in our plot, we're going to mostly look at um, weight by MPG. So I'm just going to do pull up. Okay, so this is kind of the basic, um, the basic plot we're going to look at. Um, here, this isn't a shiny app, just a regular plot. And then when you run the app, make sure it runs. Okay, and then when you run the app, this is the that plot we had um, within as a shiny app, but again, you don't have any interactivity with it. So, again, going back to those um, aspects, we'll be looking at um, where it's click, double click, hover, and brush. Okay, so I'm going to show a few different apps. So, for example, this is one of the apps where you're able to click it, and if you click this link. It'll take you to this. Okay, so yeah. So again, this is that same plot we saw before, um, but here you're able to actually click on the dots and then below it'll give you like the X and Y coordinates for, um, for those points. Um, and yeah, so if we look back at the, at the actual code for it, so the plot output where it gives you the plot and you're clicking um, the click is equal to plot click, and it renders the plot. 
um, so it renders that plot we saw before, and then it also prints out the x variable and the y variable. So that's this is that one that uses a plot click. And yeah, so when you click on any of the points, it gives you the x variable. And actually, you can click outside outside of the points as well. Um, actually, so then the next one we have is actually near points where it's you can't just click outside of the points you actually have to click on the points so this one um the near point you still have the x and y where your x is the weight which is 2.14 and then the um mpg which was like um 26 but it also gives you um information for all the var other variables for that specific point um so yeah this one is near point so it's not only the click but it's um picking up on the actual points and then yeah so I clicked on like where it overlaps for these two here and so you have the information for both of those points and then even I could do that for these same ones where we might uh, yeah and then it changes so that's near points and then let's see yeah so that one was near points and you see that line down here um okay near points yeah it takes empty card input plot click um with the x variable the weight and the mpg is the y variable okay and yeah again that was what we showed so then the next one that you see uh let me see the next one okay so that's still near points um and then i'll kind of go past that part a bit um and i'll go to like um brushing and it's another way of selecting points on a plot uh, to use the brush which is a rectangular selection defined by four edges and in shiny the brush is straightforward once you've mastered click and near points and you switch to brush argument um, with the helper so then basically what changes in this one where it's like plot brush is equal to plot brush and then yeah down here where it's render table brush points um with empty empty cars of the data set input um plot brush so then you see down here where it's like it creates um like well i guess i'll show you what it does but it creates a rectangular selection and then it'll give you down here it'll input the values so going to this one And this is the one where you can do the brush points. So before we just had like um, clicking and I'm right not see it, but I'm clicking, it doesn't really do anything. But here you draw a rectangle around points. And then when you let the cursor grow, it gives you the data for all the points that are captured within that rectangle. Um, and you could do it for any of the points. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. And then the next one. Okay, so you have modifying the plot. And then moving on to this one. Okay, so in this plot, what you see is that you're able to click on specific points and then based on um based on how close the other points are to that point the size of the size of the other points will increase so you see this is the point that was clicked on and then all the other points like they slowly get bigger depending on how far they are away from the selected point and this one use, utilizes the reactive valve <laughs> and it requires an advanced reactivity technique that won't be learned in until like chapter 16 of this book, but you can um, go there to learn more about it. But that brings us to, actually, okay. yeah, you see the distance. Um, distance is based on the reactive valve and then,
and then yeah so the distant near points the uh, input the plot click and then within ggplot yeah the size the size of the point um, is based on the distance so that is this one and i'll click on this point and it, it's kind of basically the same one that's in the book where this point is the one that's selected and the further away you get from it the bigger the other points become and so yeah the point i clicked probably somewhere in here and then yeah you see the same thing where the point i click on um depending on how far away the other points are from it the size increases okay And then, oh, and something to note here as well, that um, in the original plots, like in the first plot click, we were noticing that we used like um, base R plot for MT cars, but you are also able to do all of this with ggplot as well, um, using like the regular ggplot syntax where it's, you call the data, um, the data frame, and then you set your aesthetics where weight is the x variable and mpg is the y variable and then you create a geom point and then, and let me see if i did that one. okay so i don't have this one running right now let's see I think it is in the book, though, or rather our notes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if that one's there. But okay. Um, yeah, so two important ggplot techniques to note here. Um, add the distance to the data frame before plotting. Um, is good practice to put related variables together in a data frame before visualizing it. And he set limits to scale size area to ensure the sizes are comparable across, across clicks. And to find the correct range, he did a little interactive experimentation, but you can work on the exact, exact details if necessary. And then, so yeah. And then this one, I think it was just. He added um, to the oops to the geom point. Um, they added like a color. So for when you selected, the color is based on whether the points are selected or not. So you see here in the legend, um, the points that are brushed turn that kind of salmon color because they're select. It's true that they're selected. So all the other points um, are that kind of teal color because they're not selected. And then here, there's more points that have been selected. Um, so yeah, in this one, if you read the footnote or the note where it's like, this app makes the brush persistent so that dragging it adds the current selection. And then you could just double click to get rid of that. And then, so we have 7.16 interactivity limitations uh, i think that was okay in terms of limitations here we talk about time response um like with because the md cars data set is kind of, is not too big it's not that slow it kind of looks like it's immediate um but for larger data sets it might take a bit more time and you won't see the instantaneous reactions to the click um, so something that is suggested is like using, um, using the Plotly package and you can find out more about it in the book, Interactive Web-Based Data, Data Visualization with R, Plotly, and Shiny. And it is this book right here, um, yeah, at plotly-r.com. And yeah, and then the basic, yeah, so again, for the basic data flow in interactive plots, it's JavaScript captures the mouse event, 
Shiny sends the mouse event back to R. The reactive actions are recomputed, and plot outfit sends an image to the result of the results to the browser. And then we'll go back to the book. So also you're able to have um, dynamic height and width. Um, and yeah, he says the rest of the chapter is less exciting than interactive graphics, but still um, important material to cover. Um, so you are actually able, so in this next plot, or yeah, the next plot, you're able to, um, I forgot what they're called, but use those sliding bars to kind of change the height and width of the graph. graph. Um, yeah, so here with the slider inputs, and then that one is this one. Yeah, so there I'm changing the height of the graph. I'm going to go 500 for changing the width of the graph. So we can do that with the sliders. Um, that you have based on um, the slider input in those graphs. And then also another thing um, you can do with interactivity is you can render images um, if you want to display existing images rather than plots. And, uh, and then the following app illustrates the basics of render image um, by shooting showing cute puppy <laughs> photos. Um, but yeah, so this is um, the code for that, where you have the breed. Um, yeah, let me see. But yeah, let me just go to that one. Okay, so yeah, it is this plot, or rather this app, and you're able to choose between the different puppies so you start off with the corgi, you have a Labrador, and then also a Spaniel. And then, so yeah, they had created a triple um, with the different dogs. And then the select input where you pick the breed um, and the image output of the photo. Yeah, I'm not that good with <laughs> the HTML. HTML stuff, but basically, this code is how you created um, that other app here for the cute puppy. <laughs> and then, let me see. So, then basically, in summary, um, visualizations are a tremendously powerful way to communicate data. And this chapter has given a few advanced techniques to empower your shiny apps. And next, you'll learn techniques to provide feedback to your users about what's going on in your app, which is particularly important for actions that are non, uh, take a non-trivial amount of time. So yeah, so that, I know it was pretty short, but that was my presentation for chapter seven. Um, it's a fairly short chapter. Um, although some other things to notice, so actually like, yeah, when you go to the shiny, shiny web page they have a gallery um the shiny gallery and then if you scroll all the way down you can even see more interactive plots um and it shows some of the shinies interactive features and then yeah so this is a base this is one of the base r plots and it uses it has plot click and I guess plot hover, though I don't see what it's doing. But yeah, so that's the base R one, and then the GG plot one. Yeah. Um, so this one is plot, um, plot inter interaction basics, and then you also have plot interaction advanced. And then, yeah, so they give you the option to change the. Um, this one changing the data set. Um, if you go back to ND cars, um, changing the whether it's base R or GG plot to. Um, and then yeah, a whole bunch of other things you can do. 
um, but it's just something interesting or no, I could put it in the chat for anyone who would want to check that out, assuming I can find where my chat is. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I will stop screen sharing for now. And I guess Lucio, if you have any um, questions, uh, yeah, I wanted to take a quick look at yeah at that app that you have just shared because oh, okay. I, I, it it didn't it wasn't quite clear to me if those four basic like user interactions with the plot that were covered in this chapter uh, if they were the only ones that Shiny offered because I mean all of them are almost used by default using Plotly right. Uh, as the book mentioned, so uh, I, one, I didn't. I, uh, yeah. Oh, this one. I believe this is just shiny. I don't think this is flatly. Yeah. That was your question, right? Uh, yeah. If there were more kind of plots, actions, interactions that shiny allowed us to take advantage of, for example, like zooming in on a certain area of the plot. Or, or dragging the 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 area of the plot that you are watching. Hmm. Like so, like looking at a smaller area of the plot, basically. Yes. Okay. Huh. I mean, I was thinking like, what can plotly do, and then if shiny also has has a a method. Uh, I I mean, I wish today in order to do that, but with the plot, for example. Yeah, so I am not sure. I could look into, I guess, doing this all of this in plotly. Is that yeah, that would be interesting. But yeah, honestly, I did not look at this for too long, but yeah, I think I think I put it in the chat. I uh, yeah so yeah I put the like the website for this in the chat and yeah if you wanted to play around with it yeah. and yeah they have other ones I didn't look at all of them I wonder if this is similar to what Okay, so is that kind of what you meant? Like, I don't know if you saw that on the Graphomon where it's like, I brushed it and then double clicked on it and it zoomed in. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So that was with, with plot brush or how was it done? Yeah. yeah, so this one, like I brushed the points and then double clicked on it to zoom in on the points that are brushed. So like, like changing in the actual plot code, where is the X range, right? Yeah, um, I guess. I'm in, not in the sure server, what... hmm? in the oh. server, what is the code? Ah, uh, yeah, it's changing the range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually very, very cool. <laughs> and then it looks like this one, like you, I guess you select it here and then you see it on this plot. So where that one was, you brush it and then double click to zoom in. This one, when you brush it, you see, you zoom in on this side, on the right plot. So yeah, these are some pretty cool functions for it. Yeah, see. actually, that last example that you have shown, it mm -hmm. looks very similar to uh, to this thing with HTML widgets. I think there is a thing, a package in order mm -hmm. to to control the a certain interactivity between them. So, for example, in that graph, mm -hmm. you you use the brush to cover some points. But then that, but then the shiny makes sure that only those points in inside the brush 
uh, are yeah. used in another graphic. But yeah. for example, not only so many on them, but perhaps, I don't know, like a histogram of, all, of only that those points, something like that. It, it, mm. it's very, it seems very similar to that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I want to read this book. I haven't gone through it enough, but yeah, it, it probably can do that and like learn more. But yeah, it's definitely a cool book to check out. Um, let me put this in the chat as well. So it's on the. Yeah. And yeah, if you had any other questions or anything else you want to check out. Okay, cool. All right, so I guess that's it for today. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, this has been um, chapter seven of Mastering Shiny. And I guess we'll meet again next week um, to go over chapter eight. I'm not sure who's presenting, um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lucio. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week.